Good morning. This is video number 18 of my set of 31 videos that I'm doing to share with people about using a glucose meter as a personal fuel gauge. I'm sitting out on our daughter's porch in sitting in Florida on this gorgeous day and she and our grandson have gone to a doctor's appointment. So I'm gonna to try to get this video done in one fell swoop and then enjoy the rest of the day with her and the little one. The topic for today is day 17 of the data-driven fasting 30-day challenge, which I have said before can be done for free by yourself using the free resources at the um, optimizingnutrition.com uh, free data-driven fasting community link. I'll put the link in the description box. The description box of this video will be loaded with resource links to point you where to find stuff that I mentioned during this video. So you can look in the description box for that. You can also look there for a link to join a group that will be doing the challenge the 30 days together and um, that challenge when you're doing it with a group costs $37 and you get to meet with um, a group of people online um, you get to ask questions and have daily read readings given to you um, so you wouldn't need my videos obviously um, <clears throat> And my videos are just to help somebody who might be doing the data-driven fasting challenge for the first time. But if you're doing it in a group, you don't need me um, because every day you would, um, you would get a piece of information to read, you get some teaching, and you could be on this off Facebook platform to interact with the people in the challenge, to ask questions of the old timers like me. Um, I've been using a glucose meter as my fuel gauge for four plus years now as a way to manage my weight and my wellness. And it's been excellent for me. I've gotten off all my thyroid medication. That saves us money, money every month that I don't have to pay for that prescription. Even though we have insurance, it costs money to have that prescription. And um, it's nice to know my, my thyroid is working for my body and I don't have to use a, a prescription for that. And I've been able to bring my weight down to where I'm comfortable in my own skin and don't feel as though my body is in control of the weight. I'm in control of the weight, whether I let it go up or down. It, I don't feel like a victim to my hormones anymore. I'm starting to go off on a rabbit trail, so back on track here. Today is day 17 of the 30 day challenge and um, the topic of day 17 is what happens to glucose and fat when you eat? And I have a, I'll put an image up on the screen for you to see that. Uh, the, the image says your body can use either fat or carbohydrates for fuel. And this is so Trim Healthy Mama um, compatible too. And that's actually the diet that I have been using since 2013. And then I added on data-driven fasting using a glucose meter to keep track of my blood sugar, not just guessing, I test instead of guess and um, I've been doing that since 2018. But it says your body can use either fat or carbohydrates for fuel. While there are some differences in how they are stored and used, both fats and carbohydrates are both simply for forms of energy. Um, fuel, fuel and energy. Those words should be, think of those words as interchangeable. However, neither of those fuels or energy sources work efficiently or effectively if we use them concurrently. And so data-driven fasting, like Trim Healthy Mama, encourages that you focus on one fuel or the other 
always anchoring your meals with a good dose of protein. Well, as one of our four kids would say, sadness and regret. I had to move inside and close the sliding glass door, come in off the beautiful porch. And so <clears throat> it was noisy out there. One of the, I guess one of the downstairs neighbors also wanted to be outside. And so two of us outside talking was not compatible. So I came inside. Let's keep going on day 17's topic. Marty writes foods, Marty Kendall of Optimizing Nutrition, the guy that does this program. <clears throat> Marty writes foods that are a combination of fat and carbs are rare in nature, but are commonplace in the manufacture of contemporary Franken foods. This makes me laugh because Franken foods, the first time I heard that term was because of being a trim healthy mama. So Trim Healthy Mamas used the term Frankenfoods and Marty's using it here too in his article. Like I said, these two things are so compatible and I love bringing the two ideas together in my life. Really the big difference between them, yes, I'm going on a little rabbit trail. Sorry, bear with me or skip ahead. Um, <clears throat> the the main difference between Trim Healthy Mama and Data Driven Fasting is while they both emphasize that our metabolic health is tied to what is going on with our glucose and whether we're <clears throat> managing it well or whether we're having highs and lows and whatnot, our glucose affects all of our hormones in our body especially insulin and glucagon, the two opposing hormones that manage our weight, um, manage our energy flow in our bloodstream. Trim Healthy Mama um, does not, it, it recommends that you manage your glucose by frequent fueling, that you eat every three to four hours and that you don't get overly hungry and that you don't stuff yourself. Whereas data-driven fasting encourages that you use your actual glucose value, know your glucose value, so that you can confirm or deny whether you need to refuel or not. Um, I know that using my glucose meter keeps me sort of on the straight and narrow because there are a lot of times I want to eat, but it has nothing to do with true driving physical hunger. It's more about mental hunger or the mental, the desire for the pleasure of food. I love food. I love to eat. I love all kinds of foods, <clears throat> textures and tastes and whatnot. And, and uh, so anyway, I test my glucose and I can use that number to know whether I really need to eat or not. And also, now that I understand my glucose, I understand whether I am metabolically healthy or not. I, I've been doing this for four plus years, watching my glucose value. My, um, when I began my, pre my, my morning fasting waking glucose, actually was in pre-diabetic ranges. And I wouldn't have known that had I not been testing with a glucose meter. So anyway, and uh, I tell my story in, in uh, actually you'll have links in the description box that you can hear um, my story if you want. There's a five minute version and then I've got a couple podcast links in there where I was a guest on some podcasts and told my story there. So I won't bog this video down with that. But anyway, Trim Healthy Mama and Data Driven Fasting for me are beautiful companions. And um, so I, I promote them both. I just don't do 
the frequent fueling of Trim Healthy Mama, the every the eating every three to four hours during the day during the waking hours. I use my glucose meter to guide me, and it um, it's a I am so grateful. I am so grateful for my glucose meter, and I'm so grateful for what I'm learning from Marty because Marty is emphasizing nutrition, 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 and he's promoting protein. Um, so, anyway, that that's enough of that. I need to go back to day 17. He writes, we usually do fine when our food contains mostly fat or carbs, but given the opportunity, our body does love, love to fill our um, carb and fat fuel tanks simultaneously. So that phrase, the carb and fat fuel tanks together, makes me think of Marty's fuel tank image. So I'm gonna put that up here on the screen. I'm going to put Marty's article that explains these, this fuel tank image as a link in the description box. And um, that way you can read the article for yourself. Understanding the order in which our body burns fuels is helpful in um, understanding why we are waiting for our glucose to lower before we take in more fuel. And data-driven fasting helps us learn our own personal hunger trigger so that we know what is a healthy glucose value for us, for our, for us as individuals to wait for, to let that, to let our glucose fall down close to or to or below that level before we take in more fuel. Our body just, our body wants to store the fuel that we're taking in. It wants to have fuel so that we can function. So our body takes our, um, carbs and our fats, our energy sources, our fuel sources, and it stores away some from each meal, meal. And then when our glucose falls, it's able to pull some of that storage out and use it again. And there's a priority, an oxidative priority in the order in which our body works through our fuel sources of carbs and fats. And actually, uh, ketones is a fuel source, alcohol is a fuel source, um, and protein in hard times can be a fuel source too. But that's the last thing our body wants to break down is our protein. In that oxidative priority hierarchy of how our body burns f through fuel, <clears throat> Marty explains, as you deplete, I'm putting up the image for this too so you can see it. As you deplete your blood glucose, the glycogen in your liver, liver will be used to refill it. Note, glycogen is the fancy name for the storage form of glucose. And yesterday when I was talking about glycogen and glucose, I put up an image about that. But I'm not, I'm not going to stick that up here and interrupt this. Um, so only, only when you start to draw down your glycogen stores in your liver, your body, that's when your body will turn to the fat in your blood. And then it'll move on to being able to eventually burn your body fat for energy as well. So we have this hierarchy that we go through in that in the image of the fuel tanks. So I'll throw that image back up again, the image of the fuel tanks, and you can see it. this visual shows that as each of those fuel tanks begin to empty um, and kind of the energy is draining out a little bit, when we have waited long enough, then our body is able to dig in and get to that very last storage tank of our body fat and that's what most of us are desire desiring is that we can trim down our body and use that stored energy on our on our body our fat when we're walking around overweight 
we're just walking around with unused stored energy. We haven't let our body wait long enough to get into the fat storage tank of body fat. Marty says, you can think of your available fuels like Jenga blocks stacked on top of one another. When you measure your blood glucose, you're not just measuring the sugar in your blood. And I've mentioned before that our blood likes only likes about a teaspoon of fuel of glucose floating around. So one teaspoon of sugar is what our body likes to be in. That's a very narrow range. And we go above that teaspoon of sugar, then our insulin is the hormone that comes into play. And when we go below that teaspoon of sugar, our glucagon goes into play. I've got another image up that kind of shows that flow, um, that back and forth tweaking that our body does, trying to maintain homeostasis of one teaspoon of blood stored in circulation, well, not stored, one teaspoon of sugar floating around in circulation in our bloodstream. In the teaching that is available to us for the 30-day data-driven fasting challenge, day 17's information says foods that are a combination of fat and carbs, those two energy sources, those foods are rare in nature, um, but they're commonplace in the manufacture of contemporary frankenfoods. I'll put up one of Marty's images that shows that whole plant foods high in both carbs and fats, there aren't any. And animal foods that are high in both carbs and fats, there aren't any. Um, and then processed foods, those are typically the ones that are high in both carbs and fats. And then the, the bottom right quadrant of the image says B team, well, it doesn't say B, but it's representing team anti-carbs and fats. And that is um, kind of what people that do data-driven fasting would be and Trim Healthy Mama people would be anti putting carbs and fats together. I've put up this image of all these lovely sweet treats that are definitely exam an example of high energy density where we're having both fats and carbs together. And um, Marty calls it the trifecta. So he has beware the trifecta. Now, if you're a Trim Healthy Mama or a keto fan, you know how to make some of these things with uh, special ingredients like um, the controversial erythritol that's been all over the news. Um, and there are other things that you can use to make these, but they should be the occasional treat, not the mainstay of our diet. Well, I didn't get the video done in one fell swoop. Our daughter and grandson came home from the doctor's appointment and so I took a break from recording and now I'm back at it to finish this up. It is rest time for the family so I will sit here and have my tea and finish up explaining or sharing what I want to share about day 17 of the Data Driven Fasting 30 Day Challenge. There is so much good teaching that we can learn from through all the things that Marty has written for us in this Data Driven Fasting app and in the free manual that I've shown on the screen before. And as I said, all this stuff is available to you for free in, <clears throat> in the description box. I put links in there, or if you are a person that needs the accountability of doing something with a group, then for $37, you can join a, a group to go through the challenge with and get those weekly Zoom meetings where you can ask questions directly uh, on Saturday for those in the States and Sunday morning or Sunday for those in other parts of the world. Um, 
for example, of some of the good teaching, I was just sharing with you about the, um, the three macros of fats, carbs, and proteins. And proteins are really important to anchor all of our meals with as taught by Trim Healthy Mama and um, Marty of datadrivenfasting.com or optimizingnutrition.com. His main website is called optimizingnutrition.com, but the program that he um, takes people through is Data Driven Fasting, and he has three of them, the Data Driven Fat, sorry, the program he takes people through is Data Driven Learning Programs. There's three of them, data-driven fasting, data-driven macros, standing for macronutrients. Fats, carbs, proteins are the macronutrients. And data-driven micros, which stands for micronutrients. And um, there's a neat story. I will link it in my description box of a lady that Marty began helping a number of years ago before I think before I began uh, before I found him her name is Sue Davies and she um, she's older than I am she's in her 70s she has multiple sclerosis and her her condition was progressing such that um, she, at one of her meetings with her doctors he told her it was time to pick out a wheelchair or to get ready for a wheelchair something like that anyway and because she was working with Marty and using um, the things he was teaching her she was able to halt the progression of her multiple sclerosis and even turn back the effects of it and um, she because of his teaching on micronutrients and using putting food first and getting nutrition in she stopped taking I think she was spending about four hundred dollars a month in supplements and she pared it down to where she was really only taking vitamin D as a supplement and everything else she was getting all of her nutrition through food and she was doing well with her multiple sclerosis so I will link that, uh, her story, in the description box of my video because I did a video with Sue. I was so impressed and I wanted to hear her story told by her. So I, she agreed to do a, a video call with me and let me record it and we saved it. And um, that's available on YouTube. So I'll link that in the description box of this video. Anyway, I was saying that Marty leads these three programs, data-driven programs, data-driven fasting, data-driven macros, data-driven micros. The only one I'm willing to do is data-driven fasting because I hate logging food and that's required in the micros and the macros in order to figure out, are you getting, what are your ratios of proteins to fats to carbs and how do you tweak that to um, lose weight and in the data driven micros you have to log food so you can learn if you're getting enough of the micronutrients that you need to meet all of your nutritional needs for your weight and wellness because if we're not getting the right nutrients that can affect our weight whether or not we can effectively lose weight or not, and whether we're going to be well or not. Anyway, I just kind of eyeball it and do the best I can to get the most nutritious food that I can. I focus on superfoods. So back to what I was saying about all the information that Marty makes available to us. This is on day 17 that I'm reading from day 17. Um, and it's up on the screen so you can see it now. But I'll read it in case the print is too fine for you. Um, I'm highlighting, I'm just going to read the highlighting part. Foods that are primarily carbohydrates quickly drive up insulin, but insulin levels typically return to baseline after about two hours. And then 
a big meal of either fat and carbs together or high fat foods alone keeps insulin elevated for a very long time and prevents your body from ideally drawing on your stored energy. And so the goal in using some fasting to let our glucose fall lower and get closer to our personalized hunger trigger that we learn to identify through working with this data-driven fasting app, um, either in the challenge or using it alone on your own for the, for the free trial of 14 days, no credit card required, um, that having our getting our glucose lowered to toward our personal hunger trigger then lets our body access our stored fat fuel. Um, and speaking of personal hunger triggers, mine has lowered now to 79. And I took my glucose just a few minutes ago and I'm gonna um, look at my chart. And so at 12.30 in the afternoon, I'm down to 75, so I am four points below my personal hunger trigger. I'm going to go ahead and enter that number on the data-driven fasting app and see what it does, what message I get in the data-driven fasting app. So let me do that. Okay, so I get the message, congratulations, your blood glucose is close enough to your personal hunger trigger, time to eat a nutritious meal. I was wondering if it was, if my 75 was point, low enough points for me to get the message that says something about um, it, you probably should eat some carbohydrates to add some more energy to your body. It's kind of a little dopamine hit to get these messages, the affirming messages from the data-driven fasting app. So I have some images I'd like to share with you. So up on the screen now, you can see you can't fix your health until you fix your diet. Um, some people like to use intermittent fasting because um, they can get away with eating more junk since they're eating fewer times a day and um, then that gives them a little more leeway with what they're eating. I've been through that phase myself, um, but eating healthy is important. If you can't, you can't be well until you fix your cells and your cells need healthy food. So the next image I want to share with you is eat your medicine. You may have heard that phrase, um, Oh, let thy food be thy medicine. This next image that I will have up on the screen here um, is along this same idea. We process foods not healthy. And so I, I love this graphic of eat plants that grow, avoid food made in plants. <laughs> play on words, eat plants that grow, avoid food made in plants. And that's because the most of the stuff that's made in the factories is the processed foods. It's not good for our cells, it's processed food. I mentioned earlier in the video that I have not done a macros or a micros class with the data-driven community on optimizing nutrition dot com because I absolutely loathe logging my food and I've never been a calorie counter so calories don't mean much to me and I've always disliked the phrase calories in calories out so this next image that's up on the screen is um, sort of a representation of the idea of calories in, calories out, and calories don't count. It's the quality of our food that counts. So 
You know, is 100 calories from an apple the same equality in our body as 100 calories from a can of soda? No. <laughs> um, it is quality of our food that matters. It is um, the amount of nutrients that we can get into our bodies through food, not supplements, that contributes to our health, to the wellness of our cells. And our cells are um, very important to our well-being in the end. If our cells are not well and nutrients can't get in or out, if our A1C is high, um, it, you know, I, I'll maybe talk about A1C in another video to come because we have more days to this challenge, but high A1C values means that our cells are not well. They are glycated, they are sugar-coated, and oxygen can't get in and out well, and nutrients don't, you know, pass through easily. So, anyway, I think that's enough for today's video, and I will wrap up today early, and um, thank you for watching my video for day 17, my 18th video in my set of 31 videos, but this is for day 17 of data-driven fasting. And again, thank you for watching my video and I hope that it's been helpful to somebody.